Now, Kogi Women Protest accused EFCC of persecuting Yahaya Bello. A large group of Kogi women protested in Lokoja against the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, alleged persecution of former Kogi state governor Yahaya Bello, calling it a political motivated witch hunt. The women, led by community and party leaders, urged President Bola Tinubu to intervene, demanding that the EFCC allow the courts to handle the case and accusing the agency of targeting Belo unfairly. The protesters, representing various ethnic groups in Kogi, praised Belo's leadership and vowed to continue supporting him, rejecting any attempt to tarnish his reputation. Joining us to discuss this and just understand it a bit more is Biodun Shawumi, is a, is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. So, apparently, Yahaya Bello seems to have a lot of supporters that claim he did a lot you know, for Kogi State. He was a former governor of Kogi State. But of course, um, you know, we heard reports of him swindling money. We heard, um, I think, about 70 billion naira. There was just 82 so, billion. Yes. Um, it was a huge amount of money anyway. So we've heard of um, siphoning public funds. But even with this, there's still people who are supporting him and saying the ESCC is just, you know, trying to witch hunt him. I want to get your take on this story. Um, what is happening? especially with someone that, I mean, it's allegedly um, saying that he's been corrupt, but there are people who are still supporting him, saying he was the, one of the best governors that they've ever had in Kogi State. Well, um, it's um, amazing uh, the way we react to issues in Nigeria. I like the word um, amazing. Let, <laughs> yeah, it's quite, it's, it's amazing. I'm trying to avoid saying I'm petrified or mortified or shocked. You know, it's quite amazing how people view issues. You know, you it's like moving from the sublime to the ridiculous. You then begin to ask yourself, what is all this about? Now, in the first instance, we should not forget that the travails of um, Yaya Bilu started when Yaya Bilu was highly influential in the Buaris government. You know, it was known to be well connected and close to the president and the president's wife as a sitting governor. That was when the FCC first picked up the tab. You remember the 20 billion naira lodge in an account, uh, the bailout money, which eventually they were forced you know, uh, to return it back to uh, Kogi State's account. And then at the end of the day, the issue of 80 billion even occurred when Yaya Bilo was still a sitting governor. The law allows the EFCC to investigate, and we, they've been carrying out their investigation. They cannot prosecute him because he enjoyed he enjoyed immunity. Yaya Bello, out of power, is now being you know uh, prosecuted by the EFCC for the alleged infractions, you know, um, to the tune of eighty billion naira of public wealth. Now. You now have people within the state. Yaya Bello is refusing, to, has refused to appear before the court right in Abuja. And uh, he's been going from one court to the other, trying to frustrate uh, his arraignment. Now, we now suddenly have women, you know, coming out after the House of Assembly also passed the resolution, even demanding for the removal of the EFCC chairman and, you know, a, very on very ridiculous grounds, alleging threats to life against the governor, against the Ayabilo. Oh, come on, where are we coming from? How did we get here to start with? When someone accused of looting public wealth, less the law presumes innocence, you know, that is innocent until proven guilty. As an accused person, he's still considered innocent. So therefore, what is wrong with Yayabilo appearing before the court? Well, we've seen the role that the Kogi state governor is playing in all this. He's been featured either in um, preventing the arrest of Yabelo or harboring him or accompanying him to EFCC compound. So we've seen all this. The governor enjoys immunity. And therefore, for me, this is a real show of shame. It does not mean Yabelo is guilty of any offense. It does not mean he's guilty as charged, but that Yabelo has to be processed through the criminal justice system to establish his guilt or otherwise. You know, evading prosecution 
is not the solution to the problem. The case is already before the federal High court. All he needs to do is to turn up in court. But he has so far refused to do that. So some other two people have been tried currently who are supposed to be tried along with Yaya Bilbo. We do not have people protesting on their behalf, but we only have women, you know, coming out and some... Uh, of course, you know, uh, this is probably in this protest, you know, uh, to, 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 to campaign that Yaya Bilbo should be allowed to go scot-free without having to account, you know, for the alleged infractions. It does not mean he's guilty, and I'm not saying he's guilty by any means, but anybody charged before the court must appear before the court and be processed through the criminal justice system. I just even can't imagine how the women will go out and protest and all that, but um, it, it brings to question, you mentioned the fact that uh, he's being protected by a sitting governor. Uh, whether you mentioned it or not, but that's the reality. He's being yeah. protected by a sitting governor. And my question has always been that, uh, don't you think it's, it's high time we, maybe we revisited this um, immunity clause that is for the governors and all that? I understand that it's supposed to give them some time to concentrate on what they're supposed to do. But let's take this scenario. Uh, Yaya Bello is protected by this governor. This governor commits crimes or, or embezzles uh, state funds also. And the next governor, if he's lucky to install someone who will be uh, his stooge uh, as well, the, the thing continues. Government House becomes a, a place that uh, should have been turned to Kirikiri or something. It's a cycle. So will it continue this way? Because it seems as if, apart from giving immunity to the governor, the entire government house is immune from anything. So you can mm. commit a crime and run into government house and you cannot be arrested because, hey, why will we think that the Ayabelo might be housed in the government house and nothing can be done about it? Yeah, the, government, the government lodge is not immune you know, from being visited for purposes of... Um, apprehension of suspects or purposes of investigation is not. What you have is you have a government heavily protected by security forces, you know, and it is chief security officer of the state who has the authority to allow people in or not. And he will simply instruct his security guards not to allow um, EFCC officials in. And that's exactly what has been going on. It's quite clear that um, the security officers attached to the government including SSS and the police, are under the duty to protect him. And therefore, they will respond to his instruction um, to, to, to obstruct or to stop anybody you know, from gaining um, entrance to government house. So it does not mean that the government house itself is immune. Uh, it's actually the person that is immune. Um, you cannot commit a crime and then run to Federal Ministry of Education or Federal Ministry of Interior and then expect that the security services will not come and apprehend uh, from there simply because the president is immune and uh, the ministry is under the president. Well, that's not the case. What we've seen is a show of shame which does not go well, you know, for our country. He, for me, it no matter what the offense is, it's presumed innocence until proven guilty. And Yaya Bilo should avail himself of that opportunity. What is he afraid of? You know, all this talk about EFCC wants to kill him, wants to kill the governor. You know, this cannot hold water. No, this is a country being ravaged by corruption, and corruption is destroying and killing so many Nigerians. And for once, we have an agency trying its best, you know, to deal with this problem. The money we are talking about is humongous, 80 billion naira of public wealth. You know, siphon allegedly. And so why is it that um, if I am Yaya Bilo, I will probably avail myself and say, look, I have not done this. If you think I've done it, uh, then come and, come and prove it. After all, uh, we do not have an um, accusatorial system, you know, and whoever alleges must prove. So it is the problem of yes to prove whatever allegations against Yaya Bilo. And it is also the business of Yaya Bilo, you know, to turn up in court you know, to have his day and, you know, exonerate himself. So why all these concert protests, all these, uh, uh, what appear like concert protests, all these um, either sick game going on currently over a criminal matter involving a huge amount of public wealth? Well, I don't understand who is hiding and who is seeking. Because last week, was it, that we heard that 
Yaya Bello, according to his aide, went to EFCC's office. They didn't arrest him. They didn't uh, interrogate him. He just walked in there. He walked out. Nothing happened. And then afterwards, EFCC maybe followed him or something to government house and laid siege. Uh, the EFCC came out and said that he was not in their custody, but they did not deny that he, he went was, there. So yeah. there's still a possibility that he really actually went there. So I, I don't know whether EFCC on its own is also playing a game that Nigerians do not understand. So when you say hide and seek, is it the Ayabelo that is hiding and EFCC is seeking, or EFCC is hiding, they are hiding something and the Nigerian people are seeking to know what the real uh, situation is? Because we can't imagine why he's still out there and nothing has been done. Yeah. Uh, yes, if you notice one thing, Yaya Bello went to EFCC premises, accompanied by the governor, hmm. the Kogi State governor, Odudu. I saw the, 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 the visuals hmm. of that. And you and I know that there is no way the governor will be with him and you will have you know, a plethora of security uh, forces, you know, around the governor to protect him. And that includes DSS and the Nigerian police officers. Um, and may, may also include the civil defense corps, whose duty is to protect the governor. Yaya Bello in the company of Ududu would make it almost impossible for EFCC to immediately apprehend him, except there has to be um, a showdown between the ESCC operatives, who were not even prepared for him when he came, you know, and the governor's team, who are well handled and well prepared, you know, for the trip. So, um, ESCC not taking a decision to arrest him may be out of um, sheer wisdom to say, look, we cannot, there, there will be a bloody confrontation, which is what they don't want. They want their ability to face the court, but not, you know, to lead to any loss of life. So, Whatever factors that influence that decision, I don't know. But that's my own, you know, assessment based on the visuals which I um, saw. But that notwithstanding, who is playing high and say? Yaya Bello is playing high. And the Federal High Court is the one seeking. ESCC is only playing a role, you know, to try and apprehend him to face the court. Is the court, look, there's a warrant of arrest issued on him. So is the Federal High Court seeking, you know, to try Yaya Bilo, and Yaya Bilo is the one hiding from that very process. And that's the way, you know, I think it should be interpreted uh, clearly. The fact of the matter, which is clear, is that the governor, Ododo's protection of Yaya Bilo, is calling into question the issue of immunity for mm -hmm. uh, public officials. I think we have gotten to a stage now where we now see immunity serving, you know, the the the, the goals of um, corruption. So, which is one thing, and in, and impunity, which is one thing we need to resist. It is time we begin to ask questions around whether our governors in reality need immunity. After all, the prime minister in Italy does not have any immunity from being arrested or being prosecuted or investigated. So, why are we running away from that? One of the ways in which to curb executive recklessness, lawlessness, and corruption is to remove that immunity. We have seen now even a governor who has not been accused of corruption seems or appear to be protecting mm -hmm. a man allegedly, you know, of uh, looting estates of over 80 billion naira. His hands, are, his hands yeah. are getting soiled now. Which means not the one. there is nothing that you will tell Ododo or, or whoever is in charge now in Kogi State uh, to make him allow a free and fair election after mm. the tenure of Ododo because he has to install someone mm. who can also who protect, protect him. him as well. So three tenors Absolutely. down the line, so we sorry. have criminals in government house. So why, why, are, why are these women coming out? Because you would expect that the people of Kogi State should know this. You would expect that every Nigerian should know this. And you definitely want a better system of government. Mm -hmm. Why are we having several people who are supposed to stand up for the nation that their children are going to inherit? But here, they're supporting this person, saying it's just a witch hunt. And of course, it was a very good governor. At what point well, do we do we at, at what point do we rejig our system and the mindset of Nigerians to stand up for what is right? Well, we faced this situation before, 
uh, you remember when um, um, uh, when uh, a former governor from Delta State, you know, was arraigned, you know, and uh, on so many charges in Nigerian courts, and we couldn't convict until when he was convicted in UK, Abroad. and that was what ended that. And to our own shame, anyway, uh, that he was convicted for offences which we should have committed him here. He was able to get away with it. At that point in time, we had people protesting. And I remember that slogan, my thief, now my thief. Go and face your own thief. Mm -hmm. you know? And that was the slogan at that point in time. Now, we've moved far away from that. We've you know, moved miles away from that era. And I believe probably that former governor is now a changed person and a better person after being processed through the criminal justice system. Now, back to Yaya Bin. Look, what will motivate women to go out, to go and protest? You and I know, we all know clearly that this is not a genuine protest. What you've seen is not civil society protesting, or you have the students protesting, or saying that Yaya Bilo is being persecuted, you know, uh, unjustly after being tried. No, you have a situation where the protest is induced, in my view, based on my own experience, you know, that uh, to forestall, you know, the possibility of Yaya Bilo, you know, being uh, tried. They are even calling on the president to intervene. It that clearly shows that they do not even know what they are talking about. There's a federal high court warrant. The president cannot stop that. There's a federal high court warrant. The process has started. They have started processing him through the criminal justice system. Is the one evading, you know, process. So there's nothing the president can do. Even if the president likes Yaya Bino and he wants to do so much to help him, there's little he can do until that process has been completed. Whether he's found innocent or guilty, if he's found guilty, the president has the prerogative of mercy to pardon him. And he may choose not to do that, you know, because, again, he will be conscious of uh, what uh, people would think in relation to his credential, anti-corruption credential. So, so we are in a situation where we are likely going to see more drama like this coming up. Kogi State House of Assembly, we have that seen Kogi women. At a point, we'll see Kogi men, we'll see Kogi youths, Kogi babies, and all of them, you know, asking, begging the Mr. President to intervene. There's nothing he can do. That's a federal court warrant. He has to go and face his case in uh, Abuja. Uh, let me just let me just uh, be a very ignorant person here now. Um, the, you talked about the fact that the security detail of the governor will not allow any arrest when the governor is on because he's the chief security officer of his state. But the, the, the president is the chief security officer of the entire nation. Can there be nothing he can do? to make sure that the security, even the security detail of the governor, complies with the law? Yes, the, the president cannot do anything about the situation currently. It's up to the federal high court. If EFCC, currently EFCC is saying that they do not know his location, we all now know that it's not only in Kogi State, they have not admitted that he was either, you know, to evade arrest, uh, from the Pogi uh, gov uh, governor's house in uh, Abuja uh, by Ododo. So we know, obviously, his last point of um, sight is uh, with Ododo. So we know where he is somehow. Now, it's up to the federal high court. The federal high court cannot lift the governor's immunity because it's a constitutional matter. But it is up to the federal high court to take further steps, you know, to apprehend what the court can do is to order issue another order that he must be arrested anywhere he's seen because he has to appear in court. There's a warrant of arrest, you know, hard for him. Interpol have been informed of the situation. The problem is is with the governor enjoying immunity. That itself is an abuse of office. But we have a very compliant status of assembly, which is not likely going to move against the governor. The only option the federal government has is to declare a state of emergency in a Kogi with a view to be able to remove, get the governor to step aside and arrest him. But again, the conditions for state of emergency does not exist in Kogi. There is no total breakdown of law and order. So the federal government cannot do that. So we are in a dilemma. We are in an uncharted territory where an accused person is being protected, you know, by somebody with immunity. And therefore, how will the court 
or the law enforcement agencies proceed with this, we don't know. One thing which is clear is that the IG or, and the director of DSS can withdraw the personnel attached to the governor. Again, that may not be constitutional, given the fact that uh, the governor's life will be at risk, you know, uh, within that short period, with a view to arrest um, uh, uh, to arrest uh, Yaya Bello. So it's a very complex situation. We are in an uncharted waters. How this will be negotiated, you know, depends on the reaction of the federal court in Abuja. Mm. Okay. Well, we'll, well, we'll stay and see what happens, <laughs> how it will unravel. And we just hope that, you know, I mean, everybody just stand for what is right. I think that's the only thing you owe your conscience, just stand for what is right. And we hope that corruption, um, you know, things like this, where, it's now be where it now becomes a cycle of governors, you know, getting another person in place to ensure that they're being protected, protected having immunity, even when you've, you've done things that are unconstitutional. We hope that we just have a system that works for all and everybody will be all right at the end of the day. All right, thank you, Biodun, for coming. Thank you. It's always a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. As always. Have a nice day. Have a nice day, sir. Thank you. All right, so we've been speaking with Biodun Shoumi. He's a public affairs analyst, and we've just been looking at what's happening in Kogi State with women protesting, um, saying that the EFCC is witch hunting the former governor of Kogi State, Yahaya Bello. We'll continue to look at the story, how it unravels, and bring you more updates on that. All right, that's it for our show today. Thank you so much for having the breakfast with us. My name is Rome Paulson. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. Thank you for being there. Have a wonderful day. Good morning.